We're a true family business. We look, I'll consider our employees part of our family. We have two stores, one in East Milwaukee and one in Patton. We have an amazing staff. That's why we have such an amazing store. So we're truly blessed. So John, we're here at Ellis Family Market today. Uh, can you give us a little bit of history of this family business here in Patton, Maine? Uh, we're currently in our, our fourth, uh, third generation right now, and I've been here working since my dad bought this in 1983, so I'll be here for 38 years. So what has the last year been like for you as a business owner, a major employer in the area? Um, can you talk a little bit about what, how, it, how difficult it's been uh, as far as, far as business-wise, uh, obviously we've been uh, a lot busier over the last 52 weeks. We've been up uh, tremendously. Um, I wouldn't say it's a healthy tremendous um, at, at the expense of our restaurants um, because we are our geographic location. I think a lot of people feel safe coming up here. We naturally social distance and so we've had an influx of business. Um, on the other hand, I don't think it's been a very healthy business because we're just under, feel like everybody's very stressed out. Um, I've given our employees, I think, three extra bonuses this year, trying to give some extra time off because everybody is completely exhausted. It's been a full year now at this point since the first round of executive orders went out by the governor and that she's essentially been governing by executive order without much input from the legislative branch. What do you think about that as a business owner? What, what are your thoughts? Um, I, I think right from the beginning, so she, she started when uh, Ms., Mrs. Mills started the uh, the mandates. I think she said, "Well, we're going to do this for a month." In a month, okay. Now we're 12 months into this. When did this end? And it's and but most specifically, it was a limiting number of people in the stores, um, and then number two was obviously the masks. And we're, and she expects us to be the enforcement for masks. There's people who have uh, medical um, exemptions as well. I've have several employees have medical exemptions, and so we have to deal with that on a daily basis. So what sort of things can state government do to actually help you as a business owner? Stay the hell out of my business. Stay the hell out of their business. You know, that's what we were made upon. I mean, I think the biggest thing is that our governor has put out an anonymous tip line. So when customers come in, they can anonymously call and say, they're not wearing masks, they're not social distance. And so then we get an email saying, if you don't restrict this, we're going to remove your licenses and take it, shut your business down. Well, number one, they can't do that. And number two, it, it, it's, it's wrong. It's fear. John, you're obviously very involved in the community. You're on the school board. Um, you're a major employer in this uh, rural community. You know a lot of folks. What have you seen as the impact of uh, not just the, the virus itself, but the government's response to the virus at the state level? I, I don't even listen to her. You know, I know she came out with, I guess, the next dates are March 24th and May 24th. Well, and where those arbitrary dates come from, I don't know. I mean, if she wants to base everything on a nucleus of the Portland area where most of the people are, God bless her. You know, but when she gets at Augusta North and off to the, uh, to the coast and stuff, I mean, we're a whole different bird. We're, we're two different mains, and that's all right. And you know, the, Portland wants to come up here and let's be the playground, but we got to live too, and we got to survive. And right now, I think it's time for us to gather together and, and take our towns and our counties and our state back. And uh, the government works for us, we don't work for the government.